Welcome to Indian time uh, for this nice rainy day. Uh, this is the month of, uh, of uh, April, which is the uh, uh, month of the buttercup. Uh, the place names, place name for this uh, show will be Nuhlusletk, uh, which means uh, referring to a stream that goes underground. And they, uh, they believe this could be the Flint Creek area. That's uh, it's a, what is it? Hold on just a minute here. Nutlud Huletk. Nutlud Huletk. Which means referring again to the water was going underground. Nutlud Huletk. The animal for this show will be Heut. Heut, which is pack rat. Heut. And the um, plant will be uh, what shall we use for this week? This plant is uh, I think it's Kaukaupul, which is referring to the willow. The uh, willow is a is a plant that. Uh, the Salish uh, meaning uh, is uh, used, they use this to make ropes. And it's also uh, uh, also a medicine, you know, the bark could be pounded in, into a fine powder and, and applied to the cut, or it could be chewed and placed directly on an abrasion. Uh, so it was a good uh, medicinal plant for cuts. Uh, the barks and the leaves and the young stem and the tips also could be made into an eye wash. Uh, the uh, branches and the stem of the willow you used uh, to make fish weir. A lot of, uh, uh, a long time ago, a lot of people trapped fish and the fish weirs were made out of the, the, the willows because it was so flexible and it was easy to work with. So there was a lot of different things uh, that could be that the willow was used for. That's the plant uh, for this month. Again, going back to uh, referring back to the uh, uh, place name, as I said, uh, there's a lot of areas, I'm sure, back uh, in time where uh, a lot of the streams that came down from the different uh, water watersheds, waterways. A lot of them came down and then would go into the ground, and sometimes they, it would go on the ground for a long way before it would come back out. So, so this word, uh, there's different ways of, of, of saying this, I guess. Different places have these names. So, uh, for instance, there was one area uh, south of Darby, uh, south of the Medicine Tree, I think it was, uh, I can't remember what, it, what, what uh, small stream that came down and went into the ground and then it seemed to come away past the the river before it came back in uh, so it, it travels underground quite a bit uh, so the, that one i think was called uh nuhwetk i mean going back into the ground uh so there's nuhwet uh and and today's uh, the words today's word that I'm using is uh, 
in Tlutlhuetco. So there's a, all referring back to the water or the stream or whatever that comes and going back into the ground. So that's the, the place name for, for the show. <coughs> uh, some of the things that are coming up here re in a short time here, this weekend um, on the 19th and the 20th of, uh, of uh, April, we're having, uh, we're having a, a birthday powwow. The uh, Kwikwisu family is uh, sponsoring a powwow. It's uh, in honor of Alec Kwikwisu's 50th birthday. So this weekend, uh, first grand entry, seven o'clock Friday night at the community center. And then at one o'clock, they're going to have, uh, uh, on Saturday at one o'clock, they're gonna have a dinner. And then Saturday night at seven o'clock, they'll have the second grand entry. There will be a stigging uh, that will follow the dances both Friday and Saturday night for those people that want to play stick game. So after the, uh, the dancing on Friday and Saturday night, they will have uh, uh, stick games. Also on the uh, Wednesday, the 1st of May coming up shortly, will be the elders meeting down at the Longhouse starting at nine o'clock. Uh, on May the 3rd, which is a Friday, it will be the Head Start Mini Powwow, which is not very, not very mini. It's a huge little powwow, I guess. And this is in honor of all the Head Start children throughout the reservation. Uh, and that will be held at the Job Corps Center. So come on out and, and watch the young people, um, future champion dancers, uh, kick up some dust out there at the Job Corps Center, which will be, again, Friday, May Third, then the next day, um, uh, Saturday, May fourth, will be the annual Job Corps powwow, and I believe there's two grand entries on that, which will be one o'clock and seven o'clock on Saturday. Uh, our last cultural workshop down at the Longhouse will be on Wednesday, May the eighth, uh, last uh, workshop for this year, and because of the the lack of uh, of uh, of uh, attendance has been kind of sparse this year. We might change and do something different next year. The river honoring will also coming up in May. Uh, May 14th, 15th, and 16th uh, is the uh, river honoring, which is held down there uh, on the east side of the river. Uh, as you go down uh, Round Butte Road down to the old school, you take a left there and go south all the way down to the end of the road and take a right. Takes you right down to the river. And river honoring is um, sponsored by the tribes. So you have two loops of teepees there. Uh, the young people come down and each teepee is a station. Uh, you have fisheries, wildlife, uh, recreation, culture, different stations at each teepee. And as as the children come from the different schools, um, they, uh, there's a time, I think they have maybe about 20 minutes at each station, and they move on to, until they complete the, the circle. They're anywhere from um, probably 1,000 to 1,300 uh, kids come down during the river honoring. And everyone is welcome, not only, it's not only for the, uh, young people, but adults, a lot of parents come down with their children sometimes and, and participate and, and uh, watch and go to, to the different stations. It's very educational. It's uh, honoring the river, how to preserve and how to protect the river. But also there's different, uh, a lot of good information that is uh, presented to the lot of the, to the children, to the uh, audience that uh, participate. So that's May 14th, 15th, and 16th. Some events that took place here a long time ago uh, on, on the 3rd of uh, April was uh, in 1864, residents of, the, of Hellgate in Missoula 
Lynch, the son of a Kalispell Ponderay chief, on the 4th of uh, April in 1926, uh, Mr. Symes opened the Mineral um, Springs Hotel in Hot Springs, and that's how it has got its name. On uh, April the 8th in 1911, uh, the incorporation of Demers Mercantile started. On the 10th of April, 1911, the town of Elmo, named after local tribal member David Elmo, or Elmer. Um, on the 12th of uh, April, 1910, Congress opened the Flathead Reservation to homesteading, which changed the lives of many tribal members here um, and continues to affect our lives. On um, the 18th of April, 1859, President uh, Buchanan signed the final ratification, uh, or the final ratified uh, Treaty of the Hellgate. In 1866, April 19th, uh, Fort Lewis our Father Lewis Tallman was born in, in 19, or 1960, or he died in 1962. For those of, new, those of you that got a chance to know Father Tallman, he was quite a character. He was very fluent in the Salish language. Uh, uh, in the 22nd Congress, uh, 18, 1968, Congress agreed to a lands claim settlement which, uh, with the Confederation of Kootenai Tribes. On the 23rd, 1904, President T.R. Roosevelt, uh, over objections and protests of tribal leaders, signs the Flathead Allotment Act, authorized by Representative Joe Dixon, a Republican from Montana. On the 27th of April, 1882, the town of Arley was named after Chief Arley. Those are some of the things that, that took place many, many years ago. Today, I, I would like to also talk a little bit about, uh, a little bit about uh, uh, a lady, I guess most of us had a chance to to know her name was uh, Agnes, Agnes Vanneberg. Agnes Vanneberg is, uh, uh, I guess she was very inspirational to a lot of people in the culture and the language. And she was uh, born in, in Valley Creek near Arley uh, to Ineas and Adele Adams on February 14th, 1901. Uh, so she celebrated her birthday on Valentine's Day every year. Agnes uh, learned a lot of the traditional Salish culture while she was growing up. And um, I, she went to school, but uh, illness cut short the formal uh, white man's education. She learned, uh, but she learned about the medicine, different things of the Salish life from her mother and grandmother. In August of 1920, she married Jerome um, Stanislaw Vandenberg, uh, who passed away in 1974. And the couple, uh, Agnes and Jerome, had five children. Uh, they had three sons, uh, Ineas, Joe, and Victor. Um, they had two daughters, Annie and Lucy. Um, they uh, are all still very active in communities. Lucy is director of the uh, People's Center. Annie teaches language and culture in Arley school system. Um, Ineas is, uh, uh, helps out with uh, the part of our elders advisory, uh, culture advisory council down at Longhouse and has offered and given us, given us a lot of information of the past of our language and our culture. Uh, 
When uh, Jerome passed away in, in 1974, you know, Agnes um, continued her works with the people. She, she passed on the, the Salish culture and language to the younger generation. Uh, she worked with the uh, Flathead Culture Committee, which is now the Salish uh, Pond Ray Culture Committee for many years over uh, while she was living. Uh, she had her uh, summer language ca culture camp at Valley Creek, which is now named the Agnes Camp. Uh, a lot of people from throughout the country came and learned from her. Uh, the, the SKC had a, an annual um, camp there, a week-long camp, culture camp with Agnes. And I believe that uh, SKC continues to go up there uh, annually in the springtime. Um, now that uh, Lucy, her daughter Lucy, has taken over that part and he continues to have a week-long camp uh, with the with college. Agnes um, was a very kind-hearted lady. She never hesitated to to share and to give uh, what she knew, what she had, the knowledge that she knew. Um, but she uh, really uh, enjoyed teaching. And because of that, uh, a lot of people took advantage of her. And um, I will talk a little bit more about Agnes when we come back from this short break. Over the years, our people have lived through smallpox, assimilation, and starvation. We've battled alcohol, drugs, and poverty. Now it's HIV AIDS. Help stop the spread of HIV AIDS in Indian communities. Educate yourself and your loved ones before it's too late. This is real life. It has real consequences. Welcome back to Indian Time. Again, some of the um, things that I shared earlier, um, the this is the month of uh, April, the buttercup, month of the buttercups, Chiyadlimins The animal, again, the word for the show is Heut. Heut, pack rat. The plant is Qawqawpul, which is the willow, uh, which has been is medicinal, but also used for many different things. Uh, the the uh, person that I'm talking about, the show Agnes Spanberg, as I said, it, it was a uh, uh, it was a very instrumental, very big part of the preservation of our language and our culture. Contrary to the belief of some people who think that. We can't go back in time. We can't live in the past. It is just absolutely just the opposite of that. In order to exist, in order to uh, maintain the, the, the privilege and the honor as to be identified as Salish and Kootenai people, we must maintain those values of the culture and the language. We must hold on to that to be truly identified in this country as a different race, as, as, a, pers as a people with a culture, as a people with a language. All different cultures, different languages are different and is necessary to each one of those cultures, whether you're, you're white, Japanese, Chinese, German, Swedish, or Salish, or Kootenai. It is the value system that is important to who we are, and that value comes from our culture and from our language. So it is very important to maintain and to learn and to understand those so that we can continue to identify ourselves and continue 
to be proud of who we are as Salish and Kootenai people. Agnes Vandenberg played a big role and was a big part of that while she was alive, both her and her husband, Jerome. They taught many, many people a language, a culture, and the value system of, of who we are. And in her canvas, I said, many people came from throughout the world, from Germany, from France, from Japan, different places throughout the country had came, knew about Agnes's camp up in Valley Creek and came. A lot of these people that came respected her and her wishes and, and learned from her without taking ad advantage. But there's always those greedy people who look at things differently and how they can make money off of it. And it was a case of several people who came to visit Agnes and spent a few summers with her and took that knowledge that they learned from her and turned it in into a profit and made profit. They started their own um, camps, their own places to teach how to tan hides, how to bead, how to sweat, how to do different things. These were white people that did this, that took that culture took that learning from Agnes, who was so kind to share, because she wanted people to understand who she was. She wanted people to understand the, the importance of maintaining the culture. But as I said, there's greedy people all around who think of nothing of money, of anything, think of nothing but dollars. So how to? to make money off of it. And several people turned this information um, that, she, that Agnes had shared and made money. I don't know if they're still doing it now, but, but that's happening throughout the world. Many, many different people are digging into other cultures and becoming experts in those cultures and selling it, um, which is very, very wrong. But before Agnes died, and. May 31st, 1989, she taught many scholars, young people and community members that, uh, members that importance, the importance of the language and the culture. The world she left in 1989 was very different from the one she entered in 1901. And she is a very, very, uh, big part, and we miss her to this day. And because of that, we have many people who have taught and the language and uh, the culture. And I would like to talk a little bit about a project that uh, the Culture Committee, through that, with the help of a couple of young men, Wes Ben and Sam Sandoval, we, we, we were, um, through a small grant, we were asked by the Yellowstone National Park to do some sort of uh, information uh, for the interpretive center, for the visitors centers in Yellowstone. And I'd like to share a little bit of that. We have some footage on that and uh, we'll show you that um, for the rest of the show. So uh, thank you for joining me. Lem lem chpesia pisn kuskelik mei prest mshunet wichstman. Our people lived on this homeland for thousands of years. The people utilized the familiar and dependable territory stretching from Canada to the top of Utah. We were not nomadic people who found food and resources by chance. By listening to the seasons and understanding the relationships animals and plants had with each other, we knew when the time had come to hunt, gather, and travel.
Each spring, the people made preparations to dig bitter root. Women would be selected to watch for bitter root and check the roots to see if they were ready to gather. When this was determined, the leader was informed. A ceremony was conducted before a single bitter root was dug. This ceremony asked that the bitter root and all plants for food and medicine be abundant and healthful. Following the feast from the first roots gathered, everyone was free to dig all they needed. In the present, the Salish community continues to get together when it is time to dig bitter root or camas. I stood there and, and I went to back up and there's a guy behind me, so I just put... <laughs> <laughs> Early summer, when the flowers are at the end of blooming, we'd begin to dig camas. There would be a lot dug. When it was time to be baked, they'd gather a lot of covering for the canvas. 